EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Martin here with your outlook for April 8th, 2024. It is Monday. We're back to work. And Kinsley's Family Market in Broadheadsville, Monroe County, Pennsylvania, sponsors the Monday video forecast. Spring has finally arrived at Kinsley ShopRite. They have all the must-have spring items, such as flowers, mulch, and topsoil, grills, outdoor furniture, and more to make your backyard spectacular. And don't forget, while you're there, to pick up the freshest seafood and meats for your grilling pleasure. Stop on in by the world's largest shop right and begin your spring season with Kinsley's. They are Kinsley's shop right located at 107 Kinsley's Drive in Broadheadsville, Monroe County, Pennsylvania. Proud sponsors of the Monday video forecast. So today is, of course, the day of the eclipse, okay? Everybody knows that. Uh, we've been following cloud cover forecast here over the past week, and we've been telling you every single day that these change, and they move back and forth, so we're going to follow them every single day leading up to today. So today we have a good idea what's going to end up happening, but I do think the majority of our area should be okay here locally. Uh, there will be a few exceptions, which I'll cover here in today's video, uh, but uh, most of this area, even though we're not in totality, we'll see uh, be able to see the uh, the eclipse today. Uh, I do want to start this off here actually very early this morning because I wanted to show you this feature here. This is a cold front boundary right here. It's a weak cold front, but cold front nevertheless. Uh, early this morning, there will be some showers apart across far western Pennsylvania maybe and uh, much of Ohio, West Virginia, eastern Kentucky, heading up into Michigan. Uh, this is going to move eastward and fall apart but the clouds don't just go poof and disappear that's not how this works so the clouds are going to spread eastward even though there's, there's not going to be precipitation with it uh, but they will be thinning out a little bit as they move eastward so there's going to be a threat of clouds spreading ahead of this all the way up in this corridor up until up into uh, vermont as a matter of fact it might be some uh, some clouds are getting up there at the time of the eclipse and it's going to be a close call for areas uh, up there but i will say uh, in our area specifically, this corridor here from Buffalo into Northeast PA going up to about uh, the Finger Lakes region, that's going to be a little bit of trouble. Uh, and if you get further west here, maybe by, uh, you know, Cleveland, Ohio or Erie, you're kind of like on that fence there. So if you wanted to travel to those areas today, if that's the place you're going, you're probably not changing plans at this point. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. That's where you have for those uh, for the conditions there as far as cloud cover is concerned. We can see that on the... Cloud cover map for the entire uh, eastern part of the U.S. The totality area is going to go across Arkansas and up in this area like this, kind of like that uh, generally. And, uh, of course, either side of that you'll see totality as well. But down in our area, we're not going to see that. And we're going to have uh, decent viewing conditions the further southeast you go in our coverage area. But I do think uh, areas in between will be okay, too. Zooming in on 3 o'clock in the afternoon, this is the 3 o'clock hour, the magic hour, so to speak. And you can see uh, the name has a lot of clouds here. Very close to Erie here. Not quite, but very close. And this, this brown of clouds kind of sits here like this, right up in here. And there's another wave up here by Watertown going into parts of New York where it's cloudy all the way up to Vermont. So in between, you might get lucky. Further southwest here, you might get lucky. Even Pittsburgh might get lucky now uh, because this wave looks like it's going to move off to the north. So um, it's just going to be hit or miss in some of those areas, but I think the remainder of our region should be okay for the eclipse viewing. You might have some passing clouds. It's not going to be completely mostly sunny. You're going to have some high clouds moving in. Backing this up earlier in the day, you don't see this as much, but this is going to move in. These are high clouds at first, and then you get some cumulus developing in the afternoon. You can see the further northwest you go, the better chance of that to occur, okay, within our coverage region. And then uh, once we get into the evening and overnight, this starts to thin out again, of course, because the eclipse is over at that point. So that is uh, the cloud cover forecast for today. And uh, going forward through the remainder of the week. Oh, before I do talk about that, uh, the it's not going to really show here on, on the NAM, but uh, we're going to get the temperatures here. Uh, I will tell you that the models are not really going to be able to pick up on this idea. So we get to, to uh, totality, which is right here. These are probably not going to be the temperatures here at that point. The reason uh, is because you're going to get uh, uh, a day. You know, if you're not going to be in totality, it doesn't matter. You're going to have a severe dimming of the sky. Okay, it's going to look like dusk, basically. Uh, 360 degrees around is going to look like you're having a sunset all the way around. Uh, we will see that here in our area, uh, even though because we're 90% or better in most of our region. Uh, so that will lead to d not completely dark, but darker skies, okay? Uh, and it's not going to be as much as you would see in the totality area. But uh, with that, it's, it means if the sun is blocked, you're losing that solar radiation, which heats the Earth's surface. So that means temperatures are likely going to drop uh, by a good 
five, maybe even as much as 10 degrees, maybe not 10 degrees locally, but it's going to go down. Uh, whatever you are at, at uh, say two o'clock when this started might be in the low to mid sixties and then might drop back in the upper fifties to near 60 for during that three o'clock hour. And then it quickly recovers as soon as the sun comes back up. So late afternoon, it rebounds back again. So I think that's why uh, one big reason why today's temperatures are going to be capped where they are. Otherwise we'd be closer to the up mid upper sixties unabated with unabated sunshine today and uh, not, you know, and no, nothing to uh, hinder it like an eclipse, which is very rare, of course, but um, that is uh, going to temporarily bring back temperatures. So if you just, if you feel it getting cooler, you're not imagining things as you're standing outside watching the eclipse take place today. Okay, so that's that. I just wanted to cover that portion of it. Uh, we're going to get to the next system now, which is our system coming in midweek. So tomorrow is actually going to be a partly cloudy day, very warm day. As you see, above me, 70 to 76 is this temperature spread across the entire region. That's a pretty warm day for this time of year. Uh, today, again, 58 to 66 is a spread. So it's going to be warmer, but just not as warm as it could be if it, well, there was no eclipse today. Uh, we're going to have clouds increase on uh, late, late in the day here on Tuesday and Tuesday evening. And then we have some showers are going to work at us uh, here for Tuesday night into Wednesday. We can better see that on the NAM high res feature simulated radar. Move this forward just so we can see. Here's late. Uh, this is Tuesday evening. The start of Tuesday evening. You see the lead of the showers are down here. And that will work through our region of the overnight. These are just light showers, nothing really crazy. Uh, overnight, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Still some leftover showers here Wednesday morning. This is going to run out of range on the 3-kilometer NAM. Going over the 12-kilometer NAM, which is the uh, goes a little bit more uh, past uh, 60 hours, so go to 84 hours, we can see some showers here in the morning, but it doesn't really have too much after that. Maybe an isolated shower the rest of Wednesday. So Wednesday might not be too bad either as far as rain. I want to stress that the concentration of the rain that you keep hearing about that I'm going to discuss here in this video are going to basically be from thursday afternoon through friday morning okay that's the most of it there are going to be some showers in advance of that and you can see here on on uh, late wednesday night and thursday morning you're gonna have a warm front move through and then this is going to run out of range too but it's going to bring a area low pressure almost directly through our region here on uh, uh thir from thursday afternoon until uh until monday or excuse me friday thursday afternoon until friday morning and uh, this lifts off to the north, and here's the warm front in the morning right here. And here's that area of low pressure moving through the region with periods of rain that are going to occur, again, Thursday afternoon through the overnight. And uh, hopefully ending by Friday morning before we start to clear out for the, just in time for the weekend. So temperatures are going to remain mild during that entire stretch. We're going to be in the 60s. And uh, Saturday, we might take a step back to the upper 50s to near 60 for highs for one day in the wake of this system. But then we go back into the middle 60s by the time we get to Sunday. It does look like a partly cloudy and dry day Saturday. It will be breezy Thursday through um, Thursday through Saturday as well. And we'll get into the wind aspect of that as we get deeper into the week. But I just wanted to show you here on Wednesday. Couple, this is mo mostly occurring on uh, Tuesday night into very early Wednesday morning. But it's not a whole lot of rain. And it remains that way until we get to Thursday morning. Here's that first bit of showers coming in Thursday morning or late Wednesday night into Thursday morning. And then here's the remainder of the system uh, that comes in into uh, Friday morning from Thursday afternoon to Friday morning. And there could be some one to one and a half inch rain amounts for that particular part of it. Okay, And there might be some higher uh, areas in a few spots out here in central PA, we'll have to keep an eye on maybe some elevation stuff too right in here. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll get closer to this at the end of the week, and we'll give you better estimates on what we're looking at for rainfall. I don't see this being a repeat of last week or the beginning of last week when we had just raw, damn chilly and just a boatload of rain. We're not going to get a boatload of rain to this. It could be a decent amount, but not a boatload of rain. There's a big difference. Uh, and know that it's not a technical term. I'm just using this term to make the uh, make it make the determine or the difference between the two. Uh, not going to be to that level of rainfall, and obviously not that cold because it's going to be actually uh, temperatures near, maybe even slightly above average for this entire stretch for this entire week. So I think the 40s stuff, the 40s part of it, is certainly out. But we'll be breezy Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thursday, Friday during the system, and then in the wake of that next saturday i'm epa wa meteorologist bobby martridge that is your outlook for april 8th 2024 have a great monday